welcome back to my channel. If you are new here and like the video, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button for more content. Thank you for watching. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. If you cannot hear, I'm for some reason losing my voice, so we're gonna see how long I can do this before I need to take a break. I'm also quite curious if I'm gonna get this out in time because... Yeah, this is supposed to be out in two days, so I'm gonna try my best to get it out on the day it's supposed to because I'm really tired of posting late content. Let's just go ahead and get to this. Yeah. <laughs> that was cute. Although I do have my own opinions. Is this about Okawa? What about Okawa? Well, let's just say there was a few things that went down back in middle school. Toto regrets it and really is sorry. He wants to talk, whenever you're ready, of course. I still hate him. Hate is such a harsh word, though. It's true. I hate him. Okay, let's just calm down now. Whatever. I didn't even want to talk about the uptight snob to begin with. Kakiyama. Whoa, whoa, um... Kagiyama is offline. Well, that escalated. Maybe one day they can reunite and not be on such bad terms. I was going to have him do the prank next, but I guess you can go ahead. Oh, are you sure? Yeah, he should be cooled off by the end of your turn. Sounds good. Things were certainly crazy after the whole incident with Akashi's prank that went wrong. It turned into an attempted murder case on both him and Kinma, which then became a kidnapping case with Bokuto. And poor Kuro was stuck in the middle of it all. That and... Inoue's life was lost. While he was technically his enemy, there was something about him the captain couldn't shake, not to even mention he died protecting him and Kuro. It was all just too... crazy. Before him and Akashi went back to their homes for classes to start back, he asked a favor from the officer that helped him. That favor was to find out more about Inoue. He wouldn't just let that slip from him. That was the first death he'd seen right before him, not to mention in such a mortifying way. Bokuto was unfortunately still on bed rest for the first week of classes, so he was bored out of his mind and his sleep schedule was thrown out the window. So it was merely coincidence this challenge was brought to life, while it was well past midnight and he was of course having difficulty falling asleep. The amount of medications he was on to help aid his recovery had effect on his impending insomnia. He held onto his phone, debating on his next move. Should he really call them? It might just be a bother. After all, they actually have school while he is on rest. Akashi is considerate enough to even help him catch up. He turned on his phone, scrolling through his contacts before landing on one. Him and Kuro's connection have been sketchy since the incident, since the whole fight broke out, but ever since he discovered the truth, their relationship seemed to build and strengthen. He pushed the phone icon, letting the phone ring. It rung a few times. He almost hung up before he went to voicemail, but was stunned to hear a voice on the other line. Hello? His voice was gruffy and full of sleep. Uh... Tetsu? Ko? Baby? What's wrong? Why are you still awake? He heard shuffling on the other line with the sound of a light flickering on. Oh, you were asleep. I'm sorry, I'll just... No, no need. What's up? I just... I can't sleep. There was a moment of silence before Bokuto's phone rang, showing Kuro's face wanting to change it to a video call. He picked it up, seeing his bed hair worse than normal. You can't sleep? He leaned back against the wall, trying his best attempt not to fall back asleep. No, the medicine has been difficult for me. I seem to be experiencing a lot of side effects, one of them being not being able to fall asleep, which has been annoying. 
He ran his hand through his ungelled hair, with the captain and Nekama noticing the bags under his eyes. Do you want to call Keiji? He might be able to go over there. I would, but it would be morning by the time I made it. He shook his head frantically. No. No, I don't want to. I feel bad enough for waking you. I'm just being bothersome. He laughed hoarsely, plopping onto the bed. I'll figure it out. Sorry for waking you. Whoa, whoa, Cole, slow down. First, you are not bothersome at all. I would never think that. You just got badly injured and recovering, which is even more reason to come to me if you need help. If I'm being honest, I'm happy you can confide in me to call. And second. There was no words, just more shuffling. What? He arched his brow, seeing the phone ringing again, but this time, Kuro had added Akashi and Kenma. Almost immediately, Kenma picked up. Yo. Damn it, you weren't supposed to pick up that quickly. Were you up playing games? To be fair, I was about to turn in for the night. He giggled, slipping on some pajama pants out of camera. Within a few more moments, Akashi's camera was met with a black screen with shuffling and grumbling. Hello? Kashi, just go back to bed. I... I'm sorry. There was a hint of panic in his voice that was barely noticeable, but his own lovers knew that fear. Kenma's head popped back into the screen. Ko, is everything alright? The raven setter flicked his light on, sitting up in his bed upon hearing the owl's tone. I'm fine. He didn't want to do this challenge anymore. He just wanted to crawl into a ball and rot into the nearest ditch. He can't sleep, it seems he is having some side effects. Kenema pouted, wishing he could do something, but it was so hard when they had that pesky distance. Hold on. Akashi set his phone down, shuffling being heard from the others. Why didn't you call sooner? I could have kept you company. I mean, I've been up all night, but that's normal for me. Which really shouldn't be. He chimed in, sighing. Yeah, well, I'm a night owl. Ko isn't. He's a major day person who sleeps early and is the first awake, so this isn't normal. Completely equivalent to me actually having a correct sleep schedule. I mean, he has a point. Akashi appeared back into the camera's view, fully clothed with a jacket draping over him. Wait, Keiji, what are you doing? I'm coming over. Wait, what do you mean you're coming over? It's two in the morning. Cole, baby, we got you covered. We aren't going to let you go through this alone. His voice was so gentle and warm, it made the back of Bokuto's eyes sting. But I... I don't understand. I've done so much bad lately. I don't deserve this. Bad? Kenma raised his eyebrow, bringing the phone close to his face and even lightly tapped the camera's lens. If he were in person, the owl surely would have guessed he would have been slapped in the shoulder by the shorter. Yeah, I caused all of you stress so much, and I... He sucked in the breath, realizing he was on the verge of breaking down, and Kuro noticed. Whoa, Ko, breathe. It's okay. Seeing the sight of his lover, Akashi quickened his footsteps, locking the front door to his house behind him. You didn't do anything bad, I promise. He leaned into the screen again, letting his golden eyes shine with the iridescent light. Well, I do prefer that you were less reckless. You saved my life, Ko. He looked up from his mattress, with his tears successfully winning the battle and streamed down his cheeks. I did? Yes, you did. You're my prince charming. My knight in shining armor. That was cringy. Kinma smacked his lips as the taller snorted. Shut the fuck up, Tetsu. Kuda laughed. But he's right, so you don't have to do this alone. You aren't a bother. Lean on us for support. We won't turn you down. I... He paused. Can you let me in? 
He looked up, seeing Akashi knocking on his bedroom window. He scurried off of his bed, unlocking the window and then swinging it open for the ladder. He was met with a kind smile. Oh, Juliet, my angel, you finally opened your window. Pokoto giggled, wiping some stray tears that traced down his face. He loved it whenever his lover would reenact some old plays that he loved. They were both really fond of Shakespeare's works. You're being cringy too? Akashi rolled his eyes while climbing through the window with Kuro laughing over the phone, almost choking on his own laughter. Oh hush, now you're just being homophobic. Kuro gasped playfully, placing his hand to his chest. Homophobic? I am the homo. And a dork. Kuro pouted. I see how it is, you're all turning on me. <laughs> you're acting like a goofball right now. He laughed, the first time he genuinely laughed in a long time. He didn't understand why he was so scared to confide in them earlier. They were always going to be there for him. Now let's settle down. The smaller guided his lover back to his bed, propping up the phone against the lamp so that Kuro and Kinma could still watch. Wait, don't you have school tomorrow? All of you? He crawled into bed, internally relieved the setter followed him in bed and laid right beside him. I actually got ahead of my classes, so it won't hurt them as a day. That doesn't matter though, my priorities lie in your well-being. Agreed. Yes, I won't sleep until you do. I don't think that's something to compete over. Regardless, the smaller pulled his game console back out making the rooster frown. Ken, put that down! Don't make me come over there! Kenema smirked, testing the older's patience. Try me. I wouldn't mind cuddles. Unbelievable. He was half tempted to march over there. Ko? Let's rest. He pulled the taller into his chest, holding him close, running his hands through his ungelled hair that was soft to the touch. His touch was enough to make the exhaustion finally hit him like a blow to the chest. Maybe it wasn't the medication. Maybe he just needed them. He'd been so focused on blaming himself for everything that happened that he never got a chance to be selfless and lean on them for support when he obviously needed the help. Now that he was here and in his lover's arms and had his lovers on call, Far, but still close, he could finally rest. You're doing great. Just rest, love. That was the last thing he heard when he gave in to his exhaustion, with his own thoughts becoming a blur. Akashi pressed a small kiss on Bokuto's temple before he ended the call, seeing the two Nakama players passed out on the other line and fell asleep. Alright, there is that for the end of this. I hope you enjoyed it. I kind of added Bulgato for this part of the prank because I felt this would be kind of coincidental. That was not a word. But it, it, it'd be kind of ironic that he's I can't sleep prank and when there's that obvious fan fiction that nobody can stop talking about. <laughs> Which I don't mind, obviously. Oh my gosh. But the video for next week will be the third part of this, which is a Sukiyaga... Sukiyama Kagihino. Wow, I need to go to bed. Um, <laughs> this will be Kagiyama that does the prank for that, obviously, if you've seen it in the group chat. Also, be sure to check out my story on Wattpad. Uh, it is still kind of new to me posting on Wattpad again, um, and this is a story that I will eventually convert to my channel, but it will be a long time because it's going to be a somewhat long series. For my channel, though, I will obviously keep the 18 plus scenes out. Um, but if you do want the 18 plus scenes, it's in my webpad. <laughs> I'll put the link in the description for that webpad story, and I will also be updating it once a week like I do my channel. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you'd like to be kept up to date, check out any of my social medias. I hope that you all have a wonderful day or evening.